G'day guys, welcome to Rumble's Fish Room. So, today I'm just chilling. I'm not really sure what I'm going to talk about. Um, I do have one question for you, if there's any goldfish enthusiasts. Um, so, does anybody know if like giving them like a, uh, a lighter, like sinking spirulina pellet will help with any gut issues? Because I've lost a few now to gut issues and... Um, I've just been feeding my uh, extreme fish food um, cichlid pellets. I'm actually going out right now to have a look at the the protein in it because I've had done a little bit of research. I think I might. I think the food might be too high in protein. And um, sorry about the sun. You guys um, don't need to see my face for two seconds. Um, I think it might be too much protein in the fish food. Um, I've got to pack it right here. So, no, not really. The, this fish food here, the crude proteins, 38%, and um, the goldfish fish, the goldfish fish food I was looking at was 35%. Um, this one's uh, 50%. I'm not a huge fan of this food. Um, I'm not going to sit here and bag the company out, but. It makes the tank super dirty. I'm standing up on a step, just uh, having a look around while I'm here. Um, I need to clean my tanks, guys. This week of no um, fish room action has put the put a bit of a bit of a dampener on the fish room. Um, so let's have a look around here. So one good thing about my fish room is when you fracture one of your ribs and you can't really do water changes, it's alright because we've got an automatic water change system. So for anyone who hasn't actually seen it, there's this this pipe here runs around the whole room and in three levels. It's 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 underneath pretty much every tank. It's down there and it goes out 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 to the wall. Um, so every tank has got a drain on it. And then if you look, where is, I'll show you one over here, it'll be easier to show you. So every tank has these lines coming in. Um, different size tanks have different amounts of amount of lines. Um, so they get their water change. You'll see like if you come over here, hey flower horns, see there's actually two in that tank. And then these tanks down here have got one. This tank here's got four. So I just changed the number of pipes rather than putting taps on them trying to control the water flow. Um, I actually control the water flow by how many hoses are in. Although it is like unsightly, load of hoses hanging down. Um, it's all about simplicity in here and you guys know it's a breeding room I'm not trying to break any records for tidiness I was thinking one thing but you know like those cable tidies that you get for like your TV cabinet I was thinking about buying them to wrap these hoses up but I've never got around to doing it um, I need to go check this filter at some stage because something's not right there it seems blocked um, but anyway, I'll show you a bit more of the water change system while we're here. The dog's in the way. Um, so where does the fresh water come from? The fresh water comes from these tanks here. I haven't shown these on the channel for probably like a good 12 months maybe. Um, so there's a tap. Let's go from the very beginning. There's a tap down here. It's a little bit hidden. So that's clean water coming in. Then there's a solenoid. That solenoid turns on and off. Goes through two filters here. Um, fi particle filter, then a carbon filter. That one there is actually due for a change. It's got the clear canister on it so I can have a good look at it. So that goes into there and fills these two IBCs up. 
Um, so that's fresh tap water. There's a little float switch up there. See that black thing? That's an electronic float switch. So this retic controller turns that solenoid on and then this fills and then that switch there breaks the circuit. So even if this timer is still going, once this is full, it turns off via that electronic switch. Um, it's a pretty simple setup. The wire just goes from this to that switch and then looped down to the solenoid. Um, if anybody is thinking about doing it, like, just contact me. I'm always happy to give more detail. I've helped about three people set this pretty much identical system up um, step by step. So then, so these, this pipe here links the two IBCs. Then this pipe comes off it, and that's actually two airlifts. Like you can see the airlines going in there. And what that does is when this fills up at night, that keeps them circulating. So it's constantly, hang on, the other way. So up into the IBCs and back around, down through there, then back up, and then same there. And the idea of that is just to keep the water moving and aerate it to um, drop the, the chlorine content out of it. Because um, even though there is that filter there, that, that's not a very big filter and I'm not going to rely completely on that. So this water sits here cycling for about 19 hours and then the water change system kicks off and it, and it turns on three times over the other five hours if that does that make sense so then so you got 19 hours of rest time five hours of um water change time so i've worked it out roughly now it's very roughly well not very very roughly kind of roughly so i know how much water comes through these pipes well i did i i can't tell you right now I kind of worked out the first one and then whenever I add a new tank I base it off the first tanks I started on so it's roughly on most tanks this one's actually probably not a good example because of the literage but on the tanks in there that are 200 liters 220 I think they are um, it does a 2% water change three times a day now that sounds crazy small crazy often yes it is i could really set it to like seven a uh, six to eight percent once a day but um i just i just did it three times a day for fun um or well, actually no I, I tell a lie there is one reason and i'll show you so i do it three percent two percent at a time because this room is heated by a reverse cycle air conditioner. Now, in the middle of winter, this tank, these tanks are not heated. So in the middle of winter, this water coming into the fish room is like 10 degrees. So my water change on my tanks that are like 25 to 28 degrees, they've got 10 degree water coming in midwinter. So then, basically, if I do one eight percent change, um, I could notice the whole entire room t drop in temperature by like one or two degrees. So the idea of it is that the aircon has more time to recover if I only do two percent changes, and it's less of a temperature swing in the tanks. Now I'm not worried about the temperature swing on a 8% water change on the fish. The fish will deal with that completely fine. It's more about the energy costs. The, le the less this has to work, the better. So the idea of doing it three times a day is to reduce the energy costs mid-winter of the aircon. Also, my aircon's broken. If anybody is an aircon guy, send me a message so I can chat about it. It sounds like the bearings in the fan are gone. Um, I don't know if it's the bearings in the fan are gone or maybe it, like the blade is just catching something, but I kind of, 
need to work that out. I, I need to work out if it's still under warranty. Um, it doesn't really matter if it's not under warranty. It only cost me 400 bucks. It really isn't that expensive to go buy another one. Um, so if you actually are building a fish room, consider a reverse cycle. So if I had, if I had aquarium heaters in this room, um, we'll say there's 40 tanks. I could probably get away with 20 heaters in the lower tanks and the upper tanks would stay warm enough. 20 heaters at $60 each, so that's $1,200 in aquarium heaters. Not to mention the fact that they would use three times the amount of electricity as this. So if you are doing a fish room and you, and you think, oh nah, $500 is too expensive, reconsider that because that thing there is way cheaper than aquarium heaters to run and the outlay is way cheaper for you. So jump on an aircon if you can. Um, the only thing is that cost me $400. That's not including installation because my friend installed it for me and my brother-in-law's an electrician. So um, just keep that in mind if you are planning on getting one. It'll be like $400 plus probably another $300. Um, and I'm pretty sure these are still $400. I think they're $500 and every now and then $100 cash back. And I got the $100 cash back which actually it was a mission guys you apply for the hundred dollars cash back and then it was like a 60 day waiting period just to get the money it was a pain in the bum i just realized guys i didn't tell you how the water gets into the fish tanks so there's actually a bit of water on the bench there i don't know why Don't know what's going on there. I'll show you. See if you guys can see it. If you look down there, it's not going to focus on it. See that water on that bench? I reckon this overflow pipe here might be dripping. See that over joining the overflow pipe? There's a solid chance that that's leaking. Um, that shelf is actually PVC board, so it doesn't matter too much. I'll fix that later. But anyway, so then your water comes down through here, down that pipe there, and then just in here, there's a constant pressure pump. Um, it's just a Bunnings one. I bought a cheap one. It's actually lasted me like four years so um, I'm pretty stoked with that it's like $180 uh, I, I like held on to the receipt thinking I might have to claim warranty but it's it's outside of its warranty now so I've actually got two of these I've got the same pump on my retic re system out the front so then there's another solenoid here that same controller controls that solenoid um, oh, and one thing about this uh, controller it's actually Wi-Fi so see it says link ready I just don't have the Wi-Fi module for it the whole idea with that was I was able to do water changes with my phone um, just a gimmick that I was gonna do but I never got around to it um, the modules like hundred dollars and you guys know know me I'm a bit of a cheap bum when it comes to things if it, it's gonna cost me money and doesn't really have a benefit I don't really do it so then that comes in there up into the fish room and then I've just got a central water line so um, the bottom one is water the top one's air and that line runs the whole way around the room literally the whole way so that pipe there is where the air comes from so the air pumps not actually in the room if you want to see the air pump and all that jazz in a video, let me know in the comments. Um, I actually need to modify that setup. Maybe I'll do a video on what's wrong with it. <laughs> um, I kind of want to move this air pump out of the room, but there's there's actually... Oh, I was going to say there's a reason I haven't, but I don't think there is. 
I'm just lying to you by telling you there's a reason that I haven't moved it. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, I want to move. I want to move that out of the room. I've actually, I actually want to change that whole setup. You guys already know that if you've been watching. But anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap that one up there. In this time that I am just taking it easy off my feet, um, I'm just going to use the time to explain a lot of my systems in the fish room. Um, I know I've talked about them before, but I know that like a lot of people, I get a lot of messages about how things work. So I know there is a huge amount of curiosity for things like what I've just shown you. So I'm happy to do more videos about them because maybe I'll like cover points that I haven't talked about before. And I know when it comes to like watching a YouTube channel, like some new subscribers may be going back and have a look. But um, I know like when I'm looking at a new YouTube channel, sometimes I find it hard to watch their dated videos. I don't know why, it's a stupid mindset, but I hope this video is educational for some of you. And um, to all the OG subscribers, I hope you like the update on what I've done previously. But if you like this video guys, give a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe for more, hit that little red button. If you've got any video ideas that don't involve constructing anything, drop a comment because it's going to be a couple more weeks till I really want to dive into any projects that are physical. And uh, to be honest with you guys, I'm struggling to think of ideas for content in that time. Um, obviously, stripping Africans is high on the list. I need to put a filter in that one tank that had the polystigma. There's the, I've got an empty fry tank, and that is not allowed in my fish room. All fry tanks need fry because that's how we make fry. Um, I was going to say make money, but I don't make money around here. Um, also, I'm thinking about doing a bit of a deal on a flower horn um, it will only be for Perth people it's a, a bit of a laugh and keep an eye on my Facebook for that one um, I'm gonna upload this video now so I might do that post on my Facebook tonight um, after I've uploaded this but anyway guys peace out